Hello, Gary Simon here of designcourse.com. Today, we're going to continue on by doing a little bit more work in MySQL and PHP. We're going to insert and separate the data of, for the I wants and the I offers session variables. We're also going to create a function for logging in. All right, so basically, if you need uh, access to the project files, they're available uh, in the description here in YouTube and at designcourse.com. And if you haven't yet, subscribe here on YouTube. All right, let's get started. All right, so basically where we left off is right over here. Uh, yeah, so basically we have all of this information, the user data, the email, password, city, state, and the data added is all saved in the MySQL table. But the one thing that we didn't save yet is the two session variables um, from the home page that I need and that I can offer this. So that's what we're going to focus on now. So basically, you know, I, tr I really tried to think about what's the best way to kind of save this data. So, you know, down here, we suggest that people basically split um, their needs or wants with a comma and then initially I thought okay well what we would do is just take that comma and we would run the variable through uh, something called PHP explode and that's a function that will take a string and basically create an array and separate each one of these uh, so that we could place it into the database so the problem with that is is I uh, so let's say for example someone needs um, lawn mowing so they need their lawn mowed okay whatever whatever so let's say for example someone's going to offer that um except they put mowing lawn well then we kind of have an issue if you're trying to match those two up so what i decided to do instead of separating them by comma i'm just going to separate them by a space so each word will get entered into its own row in the mysql table so i'm going to create that table real quickly and that's over here so I'm just going to create two different tables. The first one's going to be once. The number of fields will be four. And the first one is going to be ID. It's going to be an integer, uh, 11 characters long. And then just change this stuff real quick, auto in increment. And then we're going to have the user ID. That as well will be the integer, an integer. Uh, this is going to be the actual... I'll put, I'm going to just make it want. The actual want will go here. I'll make that var char, and really, this is just going to be single word. I'm just going to put 50 just to be, I don't know if any 50 long character words, but whatever. And then date added. And that will be uh, date time. All right. Save. And then to save ourselves some time, so we could take this up here, just copy that, go to SQL, tab, paste that in. We're going to change the name of the tables to offers and this to offer and i think that is all we have to change and hit go all right so we now have two new tables offers and once all right so now what we want to do is come back to our code and there it is and basically i i think you could do it anywhere inside this section. I'm just going to put it right after this insert. And I'm going to make a comment. Insert wants and offers. And that will go there. So basically, what we want to do is put in once ARR, as in array, equals explode. And then this is where basically we specify whatever it is that we want to separate this, the actual string. So uh, that's just going to be a simple space. And then I'm going to put in session I want. I think that was the name of it. I'll make sure here in a second. And then copy this, the same thing for the offers as well. I offer and then what we'll do is run through those so the way you do that is do a for each once a r as once and that means this will basically loop 
the uh, however many, you know, if they entered three different words, it'll go through this three different times and put in the actual insert query. Insert into once, and that will be the user ID, want, and date added, values, and then we also need to get their user ID. And the user ID is generated from the ID field, which we didn't put in here. It's automatically generated. Uh, so I have to make a couple changes to this real quick just to get that whatever that insert ID up here was. So basically, that would be, I don't know why I didn't do this. I forgot to add this uh, the last time. So all I have to do is put result equals there and then put INS ID for insert ID equals DB insert ID and then result. So it's getting the insert ID from this result right here. And this again comes from that class that I use. All right, so now we have that. And so right here for the user ID is where we put that variable right here. All right, so that tells us which users are associated with whatever wants and offers. All right, and then we can put uh, the actual wants variable right here, and that comes from this. And that will just basically be a single word. And then the actual date added, which is just now like that. And then result equals db query and the query variable. All right, so we'll take that and then just paste that in. All right, and change this to offers. Change this to offers and this to offer and this to offers. There we go. So it's basically it's just a duplicate thing. All right, so uh, basically, let me come down here, get rid of some of the space. That should be all it takes right here to insert the individual once and offers, basically. So I'm going to save that, and I'm going to go ahead and upload this. And so I'm going to add this here, and I'm also going to change one thing real quick in the verify emails i saw an error last time i uh, where is that at yeah there needs to be a semicolon at the end and also this main i don't think that's working right now so i don't think we added that as a rewrite so we'll do that real quick change this to main and then this to main.php all right, so let's uh, save those two files, upload those. All right, so let's go back here. I need, and I'm also going to illustrate one issue as well while I do this. I'll just put sex and candy. <laughs> I think I heard that from a song or something. And then I can offer, <laughs> uh, I don't know, exercise equipment, whatever. I'm just using that as an example. Find matches. Let's put in an email address. Uh, uh, let me think of one that I'm using. Uh, I'll just put G. Simon. Warren, Alabama, whatever. All right, so let's see if this worked. So let's click on Browse. Oh, no, that didn't work. What about the offers? I bet that didn't work either. Oh, that worked. I think I may have just screwed up a variable name. So as you can see, for the offers at least, I offered exercise equipment, okay? So each one of these now ha has this user ID here, has the date added, has its own unique ID. Uh, let me go see why once didn't work. Uh, so let me go back here real quick. And that's because it, the, the variable wasn't I want, it's I need. There we go. Uh, so I need, we can leave this the same just as long as that was changed up. It should work correctly now. And so let me just go back here. Let me see if I can just refresh this and see if anything else gets changed here. 
All right, there we go. All right, so the issue being, obviously, is it's saving. It doesn't matter what type of word it is. Uh, so generic words like and and even generic words like equipment, that should not happen. Uh, we, we shouldn't really save those generic words because otherwise two people might put and in their, their need and then another person might put and in their want and then it's going to give them an, a match but it's not going to be relevant. So you would definitely want to run these through something like an str replace which is a function with PHP which will replace words so you can s basically sanitize that string before you go ahead and split it up using explode and inserting it in the database. I'm not going to mess around with that just because it's the tutorial and it's on a you know there's probably a thousand things I could do differently but anyhow uh, yeah it works just for our, our immediate purposes um, so now what basically happens is let me load up my email and here's the email from that second time I refreshed it and by the way when a person refreshes the browser you, you obviously you should check to see if that email exists already so it doesn't add two rows but I but yeah this is basically where it takes us when after a person's confirmed their email uh, and that comes from again where is that redirect just to show you real quick just so you know, everybody understands that comes from this line right here so header location it means it's going to redirect the browser from the verify email.php over to main all right but before it really sh i should direct a person over to main uh, to this main area where it will eventually show the real matches. Uh, they need it needs to basically log them in, so it's not doing that yet. And I, uh, so I have a, a a function basically a login function that we're going to add to our session .php file that will make logging people in pretty easy. So let me get that out real quick. Uh, let's go to include session.inc. All we have is just a session start here. And so real quickly, before I paste that in and kind of describe it real quickly, I'm going to make a slight change to this over here. Instead of just counting the row and then checking to see uh, if that actually equals one or not, we're going to select all from users where verify code gets that and also change the result to fetch row so that basically means it's going to take every single row that's associated with the verify code that equals that if it does find one and then put them into basically a variable that we can access and you'll see why that's important here so what we need to do is change exists from exists here uh, and we could put in I think just email doesn't equal blank so if it if if the uh, email isn't blank then it means it found an actual match for the verify code and then we can keep this the same right here uh, this right here and then what we'll do is just uh, underneath this we're going to put in user login and this is where we're going to put the exists username Sorry, not username. We're not using usernames here, just the email. And then also exists password. All right, and that's all we have to do for there. We'll save this real quick and then come back to session inc. And we need to include our, uh, our files here real quick. Let me go to index and copy those two lines all right so basically inside of here is where we're going to put the add the actual function and this is going to be user login which is what we referenced in the, the verify email file and then we're going to put in the variables here I, I can just make this email and then the second one will be password and then inside of here is where we're going to add a couple things global db and then put in our uh, variables here for the email so I'm just gonna put in new email equals add slashes uh, email right here and then new pw equals I'm just gonna put password here for now and then a query select all from users where 
email equals new email and password equals new PW oops and then I limit one just to limit the, re the results to one and then I uh, if I'm just make the variable AR admin equals DB fetch row query equals false then we want to return false and that basically says if this uh, is not found if the user is not found basically then it's not going to work it's going to return a false and then um, otherwise down here is where we can actually set up our session variables um, where we'll check to see if the user is actually logged in through the various pages that require a login and I uh, I don't want to use client ID. I'll use user ID equals or equals I ARR admin ID, which is the ID field associated with a person's um, row in the users table. Actually, I don't feel like typing this all out again. I'm just gonna do this over here, and I'll just put. You know, sometimes it's worth saving some session variables to quickly access like uh, basic user data like email and their ID. So I'm just gonna limit to those two session variables, and down here at the end just put return true and that is it go ahead and save this and then let's see over here all right so basically let me get out main.php so on main.php we want to add our includes as well so let me go over here just take these three at the top come over here at main and We'll go ahead and also check for the client session variable. So basically, uh, if is set session user ID, and then we just read them direct them ba basically back to the home page. All right, and so if the session's not there, redirect them back. Otherwise, it'll load up this page, which obviously the information down here isn't yet dynamic. All right, so I'm going to save this stuff and hope it works, <laughs> which it probably won't. No, okay. Um, let me go ahead and go to include and upload that as well. And we'll see if this works. And fortunately, it does. I didn't want to embarrass myself again, so I paused and ran through it. So, um, you know, just to show you real quick that it does work. Um, let's do that. Check the email. Click on it, and it automatically directs us back here to main.php. And just to make sure that this is all working correctly, um, uh, what we can do i mean it definitely is but one thing you can do just to check real quickly is to on main type php temporarily put echo session user id just at the top let me re-upload that real quick and that's in main and then we can refresh this page and it shows that client user id so we are logged in all right so i'm going to end it there for today and when we create the actual login page you know which is over uh oh as you can see it's not showing it because we're logged in i don't have a log out so anyhow there's usually just a login button here we'll make a quick login page and that will use that function um from the um the session dot ink dot php that we made um and then all the obviously as well we have this stuff to worry about as well all right so uh yeah check out designcourse.com and subscribe here on youtube if you haven't yet all right goodbye